Ciao students, it's time for three cheese capoletti, a delicious filled pasta. We start with two cups of all-purpose flour, a half of a cup of semolina flour, which we'll talk more about in just a moment, three large eggs, a tablespoon of olive oil, and a fourth of a teaspoon of kosher salt. You'll also need two forks and a bench scraper to get started. Why the inclusion of this different type of flour called semolina? Semolina comes from durum wheat, which has a very high protein content, gluten protein to be particular. And so what this gives us is a very stretchy, elastic dough with a great texture. And that's why I like using a pasta dough that uses semolina. It is possible to make pasta dough that doesn't use semolina flour, and I've linked a great recipe down below if that's more of what you have on hand. But I do recommend if it's available to use semolina because of the great texture that it provides. To finish up our mise en place, let's go ahead and also grab a piece of cling wrap and we will also go ahead and sort of scramble up those eggs just to make it a little bit easier in our pasta making process. Now let's get started with the pasta. Both types of flour go down on a clean surface. I mix it together with a fork and then with my hands I'm going to form a well in the middle of the flour. I'm going to make sure that the walls of this well are really packed so that way they don't accidentally break. And then here comes the egg, the olive oil, and the salt. With a fork, I'm going to gradually add in flour until a dough starts to form. This is why I felt it was very helpful to mix up those eggs a little bit before adding them to the well, because I don't want to break the wall. So you're going to see with my left hand, I sometimes reinforce the sides of that well just to make sure if I start to feel like the, the walls might fall. There's nothing like getting egg all over everything. I've done it before. <laughs> There's no shame if it happens. However, it definitely is a, a learned process. A little by little, little by little, add that flour. I know that with this recipe, not all of the flour will be used. Um, that's not true of necessarily every pasta dough recipe out there, but it's because there's a lot of factors. The humidity of the air, um, how big the large eggs were <laughs> that you used. So I will only add flour until I have a workable dough. And at that point, you can stop using forks and you don't have to worry about the walls of the well any longer. In fact, I'm gonna push the rest of that flour out of my, my surface because I don't wanna add too much. I can sprinkle some down on the surface. I can sprinkle some down on my hands um, to use only if the dough starts to stick to my hands or stick to the surface. You don't wanna add too much. If the flour is over added into a pasta dough, the dough can become very crumbly and it might not even hold together really well. So you can always add more flour but you can't take it back. So it's always something that I suggest to do very gradually. With kneading, what I'm trying to do here is stretch that dough out to form the gluten, and this process takes about eight to 10 minutes. You can stop kneading whenever the dough really feels like it is soft, supple, smooth across the surface. You'll notice a, a definite change in the texture when it's time to stop. There's also gonna be a bit of bounce back that tells us that the gluten has been formed. Now it's time to let the gluten relax, which is gonna help us to roll it out a lot easier. So I let my dough rest for 30 minutes wrapped in cling wrap. If you're waiting, quick cleanup tip, use a bench scraper to scrape down the surface. You'll also want to keep the extra flour, but we don't want any of the pasta pieces or any of the pasta dough in it, so I use a sifter just to remove that. And then set that extra flour aside because we will need it later. This is also an excellent time to go ahead and take care of the making of our filling. I have a half of a cup of ricotta cheese, a half of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, and a fourth of a cup of mozzarella cheese. I'll add in one egg yolk to bind it all together, a half of a tablespoon of fresh minced parsley and a fourth of a teaspoon of kosher salt for flavor. I'm going to mix this up. It's gonna be a very thick mixture and that's okay. For capoletti or tortellini, which capoletti is very similar to, I want it to be thick enough to hold its shape within the dough. Now, if you have a pasta machine, now is definitely the time to use it. Pasta machines just make it very easy to roll out a lot of dough. What they will do is make the dough go from very thick to very thin using this knob right here and I'll show you how to use it but don't fear if you don't have a pasta machine at home it's still very possible to do what you need to do with just a rolling pin and I'll show you how to do that too. 
Now once the dough has rested, it'll be time to roll it out. So with a bench scraper on a floured surface, I'm going to make this dough in sections. I would do anywhere from four to eight sections, depending upon how comfortable you are with the rolling out. Anything that you are not gonna use, go ahead and put underneath your cling wrap once more to ensure that it doesn't dry out. So we'll need to prepare a lightly floured workstation for the pasta dough and for the cutting, but then you'll also need to lightly flour a an area of your countertop for the cut shapes as well. How to use the pasta machine first. I'll take a section of my dough, I'll press it down just until it's thin enough to actually go through, and on the thickest setting of my pasta machine, which for me is a number seven, I'll take the dough through a couple times. What I'm hoping for is to get the dough about the, the width of the pasta machine before I move it to setting six, and I run it through a couple more times, and then I run it through on setting number five. If I start to notice that the pasta dough gets a little sticky, I would hate for it to stick through my machine, so I add a little bit more flour before I run it through on setting number four. And then I run it through a couple more times and I put it on setting three. You get the picture, right? We're just running it through a couple times on each setting to make sure it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. I will stop when it gets through on the thinnest setting, which for me is a number one. So I go all the way from setting seven to seven one, and now it's almost paper thin. I will then take a three inch circle cutter and I will cut my shapes. Try to get them right up next to each other so I maximize the amount of circles that I'm able to get from one rolled out sheet of dough. And then I will transfer these shapes over to my other side, my other side of the counter, um, for them to, to wait until I am ready to fill. No pasta machine, no problem. Really, you got this with just a rolling pin. We'll lightly flour our surface and then we will kind of stretch out that pasta dough section. I find it easier to use a slightly smaller pasta section than maybe what I would have done through my pasta machine. And then we roll it out. I'm picking up the dough from time to time just to make sure that it's not stuck to my surface um, because then I'd have to start all over. We're rolling it out until it is very thin, thinner than a dime. And then we will cut out our circle shapes just like we did before, and transfer them over to a spot waiting for us to fill them. Then whatever method you use, repeat a lot until you have about 40 to 50 circles is what you should get out of this pound of pasta. The good news as well is that you can use the scraps that are left behind every time you remove the circles. So any of those leftover scraps can just be pushed back together and then rolled out in the very same way. And that should give you plenty. Work quickly, that is good advice as well so that your pasta dough does not dry out. Here we are with all of our completed circles. Now to help them to not dry out, uh, a piece of advice that I would give you um, right from the get-go, as soon as you start cutting them, is to cover them with a clean towel. That will help them um, to not get dried out or crunchy before we start filling. Now to fill, we'll take a half of a teaspoon of the filling and we'll place it right in the middle of the circle. We'll use a small bowl of water as our pasta glue for all extensive purposes. We'll fold each pasta circle in half and we'll press the edges of the circle together, making what the Italians call capoletti or little hats. So it's meant to look like a little hat. Let me give you a closer look. I promise it's not difficult. You got this. We're gonna dust off any extra flour from the circle. We'll use a half of a teaspoon of filling right in the center of the circle and press it together. I'll then dip my finger in some water and trace it around half of the circle to act as glue. I'll fold it in half and I'll press out any air. We don't want any air trapped inside. And then the two edges come together in the middle. That's it. You got this and then repeat. Take all of your pasta dough circles, add the filling, and fold into capoletti shapes. And now it is time to cook them. We are going to get a pot of boiling water ready and don't forget to heavily salt it before you add in your pasta. Now because this is fresh pasta, remember that it's going to take a lot less time to cook. We're talking four minutes tops. Don't forget to give it a quick stir from time to time just to make sure that none of the pasta sticks together. 
once your time has elapsed, your pasta should be perfectly al dente. You'll want to quickly yet gently remove it from the boiling water. So I like to use a slotted spoon to just lift it out and place it onto my serving plate. At this point, you'll have uh, a decision of how you want to serve your beautiful capoletti. Um, I like to just serve with some grated Parmesan for the top and maybe a little bit of minced parsley to add a bit of color and flavor as well to reinforce that three cheese flavor that we have on the inside of the capoletti. Honestly, it's so beautiful and so good. It doesn't need a lot of anything, in my opinion. Um, it can be so simple and wonderful, but there are other options for how you can serve as well. Another favorite of mine is simply to cook the pasta in the exact same way, but then transfer it over into a saute pan with some melted butter. You can even add in some minced garlic to the butter or some other herbs. Um, that might be a fun way to add in some extra flavor as well. Give it a couple tosses and then serve. You can also serve capoletti with any pasta sauce that you like as well. And there you have it, some fresh pasta that you can certainly be proud of. That's the thing about making fresh pasta. It is certainly a labor of love, but I always find that it is worthwhile because there's just nothing like sitting down to your own homemade plate of pasta. And it's always fun in the process. So enjoy making it at home and have fun being creative with the shapes, fillings, and sauces.